today we're meeting with Jim Schlushman, who is the founder and president of Prosperia International, and we're going to discuss um, some issues around additive manufacturing. Good afternoon, Jim. Um, it's great speaking with you again today. Um, looking forward today to discussing your views on additive manufacturing and its future impact on the supply chain. Um, can you please first uh, provide a little bit of background and share with us who is Prosperia International? Sure, happy to, Dustin. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for taking the time for our update today. It's always a pleasure to, to talk with you. Uh, Prosperity International is my private consulting practice where I focus on improving new and existing businesses. I use my consulting practice to offer services to businesses and nonprofits. Uh, I use it by leveraging my experiences in manufacturing, manufacturing engineering, information technology, and global business development. Those experiences came from my 40-year career with Navistar, who's a global manufacturer of on-highway trucks and diesel engines. Uh, my career there included uh, 16 years as the chief information officer for their engine business. And what is additive manufacturing? Uh, 3D printing or add, additive manufacturing or 3D printing is, is any various processes used to make a three-dimensional object. Uh, a 3D printer is really a type of an industrial robot. Uh, in 3D printing, additive process, processes are used in which successive layers of material are laid down under computer control, effectively building apart. These objects can be almost any shape, size, geometry, and they're produced from a 3D model or other electronic source of data. I believe additive manufacturing is going to change how we design what we make, how we make it, and where it's produced. All of these changes are going to disrupt our current business and create new opportunities for those ready to move ahead. One of the biggest benefits of uh, additive manufacturing is that it can simply build parts that cannot be built in any other way. What industries and markets are using this technology? It's easier to say where additive manufacturing is not being used and where, than where it's being used these days. The only place additive manufacturing doesn't make sense at the moment is when you have when you have or you need thousands of parts. But that could change too because there's some things with uh, networking and everything that could make it uh, more applicable as the years go on. The list of additive manufacturing materials gets longer every day. Also, there are new machines doing composites using defined ceramics. They do sugar, chocolate, pizza, berry pies, meat, yeah, meat. And in the UK, they can print concrete. And in Egypt, they're using solar power and sand to make glass parts nowadays. And there is also bioprinting, which will change the quality of life for many in the future. So how is the, how is the technology catching on? Well, in the last couple of years, it's become more obvious on how the technology is going to change the world. Uh, at the 2015 Industry Week Best Plants Conference, uh, it, they featured a keynote from uh, 3D Systems uh, CEO Evan Hughes, uh, and he spoke on the amazing future of 3D printed that 3D printing offers for the manufacturing world. He said that after 30 years of development, 3D printing is finally ready to become come out of, out of the RD labs and into the real manufacturing world in a big way. He referenced this by saying it was 30 years for uh, the Internet to become mainstream from the time it was discovered and, and initially, and it was approximately 30 years that the semiconductor industry really went horizontal uh, from the time that, uh, that, it, that it was launched. And 3D printing is in the same uh, moment right now. So after 30 years of development, these machines are faster, cheaper, more reliable, and more durable, and use many more materials. Now we're seeing them uh, start to show up in production, Dustin. What kind of growth can we see in this industry? The industry is seeing somewhere around 30% growth per year. Uh, the machines and the processes are improving, and there are more and more companies making machines and, and supplying all these different types of materials for building parts. Uh, the original equipment manufacturers are re-engineering their machines for higher throughput, better repeatability, uh, which is going to help quality control and better uh, ergonomic design. Uh, the industry in uh, 2014 was $5 billion industry, and uh, in 2015 it's going to be hugging around $8 billion, and I've seen some projections as high as $35 billion by 2020. Uh, what are some of the niche markets for additive manufacturing today? 
Uh, there's an endless array of applications that, that exist and can be 3D printed or additively manufactured. Uh, as R&D efforts advance, we expect to see more applications and uses for ad additive manufacturing. But some current niche markets are uh, precious metals, jewelry, fashion design, uh, cellular materials, solar cells, ceramics, food uh, is an interesting uh, application of the technology, and a uh, real beneficial one is orthopedics and prosthetics. And can you talk about how the additive manufacturing is going to alter and disrupt the current business landscape, including business models that will be created? Uh, yes, what I see is uh, probably three areas right off the top of my head. Uh, one is uh, uh, unique supply chains and how that's going to change things in the industry. Uh, second one is uh, OEMs disrupting current business models and how they do things. And then a uh, real exciting one is advanced modeling in the medical field. Uh, in the area of the unique supply chains, uh, for example, Amazon has filed patents for mobile 3D printing delivery trucks. So think about this. You want it to have a wall switch that goes bad or a plate that you need. You download the uh, part or order it on Amazon. They send a truck in front of your house, download the part, and print the part and bring it to you instantaneously. Huge impact on, on the supply chain there. In the area of uh, uh, business models, uh, Boeing has filed a patent application for 3D printing of replacement parts for aircraft. And I've seen some projections where that could increase fuel economy by making better, smaller parts and increasing fuel economy in the aerospace industry by up to 7%, which is huge. And then also in the medical uh, field, uh, there's complex separation of uh, a neat example I read about recently was there was a complex separation of co-joined twins that uh, was successfully planned using 3D printing. Uh, so some real exciting things out in that area. And what do companies need to do to benefit uh, from this change in the business landscape? Well, it really all starts at the, at the beginning of all our processes in, in a business, and that's in market analysis and product analysis. And if we think the way we did previously and don't adapt to the new ways that you could do as far as growing parts instead of uh, 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 making them uh, from previous methods, uh, we won't be able to advance. But it starts with the market analysis and, and product analysis and thinking differently. Uh, then you move into engineering and designing parts differently. We used to hear all the time about design for manufacturing. And now it's uh, you want to design for additive. Uh, it's a whole different way of, of thinking there to leverage the capabilities of technology. Uh, then you get you want to have discussions about whether you want to buy this equipment or whether you want to outsource. Uh, I see there's some some scenarios where in the current industry, if you wanted to make a, a part like this, you might go to a company and send out a purchase order for a thousand of these. With networking and these new capabilities and additive manufacturing in place, I could see a time in a world where if you want a thousand of these, you put them out on a network to, to a thousand capable suppliers, they'll go ahead and deliver them to where you want to have them made. So it's a really whole new different way of thinking. Uh, so big impacts on the supply chain. And then finally, just making sure the companies uh, uh, invest and plan accordingly to, to take advantage of all these changes coming their way. And thanks, Jim, for sharing today. Uh, always glad to participate. Uh, uh, this is a real exciting, dynamic area. There's going to be changes actually by the months. There's plenty of things to read every day. I like staying on top of it and be happy to talk to you in the future uh, sometime, too, if you want another update on this or on other things, Dustin. Yep, I look forward to it.